<laughs> he wears his sunglasses at night. <laughs> So, what compelled me to start recording was because I was getting ready to ask you a question and then I thought to myself, oh snap, I'm probably going to want to document what he's going to say. And then that's where this all, how this all came about right now. Unplanned. Completely unplanned. Um, the question that I wanted to ask you is, what are your thoughts on, on the, the, the fact that the young, this newer generation basically seems to be plagued with like an epidemic of mental health issues. Um, men, mental health, uh, you know, depression and anxiety and things like that are far more prominent in, in, in our younger generations than they were with us when we were their age. You see what I mean? Um, what, what are your thoughts on, on that? Well, uh, the one good thing is we've got Mother Earth and uh, we've got the ocean. The ocean is uh, just great healers. So, um, Dig in the dirt. And when you heal the earth and heal the ocean, the Natural. opposite happens to you. Naturally. Yeah, you're yeah. a part of that and you get healed in the process as well. So we need to think bigger, like it's not just, you know, we belong to the earth, the earth is part of us, and then, you know, either we do or we don't have responsibilities, you know, it's like, if we move forward, we get into like uh, planting trees, uh, creating uh, ocean reserves, you know, we don't fish there for a couple of years, let things rain. Right. And the same with us, take a step back to heal, you know, because it's needed, time is a healer. And you need time to heal, you know, it's, it's not going to happen like that. Right. And, you know, if you want to restore a section of the ocean, for instance, the corals and all the little animals need to come back. It starts from the very bottom, the base of the ocean, the plant the same is uh, healing people, it's not just a lot of set to start first, you know, before it moves to the big, you know, problems. But, to me, that's the best way to heal oneself, is to do something for others, actually. And it could be people, or animals, or even digging a little garden and growing food. Yeah, I've got some experience with that too. As a matter of fact, um, doing art, doing art, is yeah, really, uh, absolutely, a good thing, you know, and uh, it's very therapeutic getting into the art, any kind of art. Um, but basically, if we can each one of us on our own find something that we can do for the greater good which is the planet. Then naturally, nature, then naturally you know, you'll feel better about yourself, yeah, basically. Totally. Right? That's, it starts there. That'll just personally, that'll, that'll personalize it. Personalize it. Plant one tree and take care of that tree. <laughs> you know, you don't have to do much, you know. You'll be making oxygen already for others, you know. Even that little bit, you know. It starts there. You know? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, go, go pick up a little bit of trash. Go somewhere. pick up some trash. Just do do good things. Figure it out. Do, find be, something good to do. Yeah, Make yeah. use of yourself. Yeah, yeah. And may, have fun doing it. Don't Absolutely. suffer doing it because that's not good. That's not going to heal you, you know? Absolutely. And you don't have to do something big. You know, do something small. Don't try take a big bite. I notice a lot of people's goals become so lofty that they scare themselves out of activation. They, they scare themselves. Out. They want to be a rock star or they want to be like the best guitar player in the world and then and they don't have the talent to back that and then they get depressed and kill themselves you know, pretty even, much. I mean, even if you have the talent, like that, that, you know, it doesn't mean that you're going to be getting, reaching your lofty goals. You right, know? right. Uh, it's, it's a combination of many things. You know, talent is only a small percent. You know, the will to do something, to follow through, to, to learn it, to understand it, and you know, to grow, personally. You know, to make things that makes us feel good by helping others, you know, 
But do it in a way, not a grand way of showing off. Showing off. Look at what I'm doing. That's not good. Look at what I'm doing. Do it secretly and do like smaller <laughs> projects that will succeed. You'll actually get some more. That's funny that you say that too. Um, <laughs> it's funny that that's, you're absolutely right. Because my experience, I'll just be honest with you right here on, on this video. When I first started doing YouTube, my goal was to have this grand, grand, you know, um, following and how, how do I go viral? So I'm, so I'm putting all this energy into what kind of video am I supposed to do? And, and it wasn't my authentic self, right? And I never could get no more than like maybe a hundred people to view my videos. And then one day, my buddy came over to show off his new camera to my recording studio over in Kahalui. And and I go, turn in the push record, I'm just gonna freestyle and let, let's just, you know, I'm gonna act like I'm gonna do, do a lecture right now. And I just came from my heart and from my mind on a topic that had, you know, that I had been thinking about. Dude, it's crazy. Um, yeah, that video, that speaks. video, yeah, that video got me like, a, a, like immediate 500 views, which was like, whoa, I was like, whoa, yeah, that yeah. happened? Yeah. And yeah. then, and then I remember looking at my pay, my channel. I'm getting chicken skin talking about it. I remember looking at my channel, and then I remember saying to myself and kind of speaking to the universe, I'd love for more people to have access to this if it would be helpful for them. You know, um, and then I was like, I'd love to maybe be able to tap into this to this outlet or to this platform, you know, so that it could benefit me as well as me benefit others. I swear, I swear to all of the powers of the universe that almost overnight, my phone started, notifications started going off. New subscriber, new subscriber, new subscriber, new subscriber, new subscriber, new subscriber, new subscriber. New subscriber. Dude, I got, I got like close to 25,000 subscribers now. I right. think, yeah, people, you know, people are starting to understand that less is more, mm -hmm. being genuine, being true to yourself, that's what's one of the hardest things to achieve. It is, know, it seems society. like, it seems like it is. And it's getting harder for the younger people on this planet. Because they have more distractions. Yeah, and we left a more polluted world for them to deal with, you know, more people are fighting over resources and it's not gonna get better in that direction if we will be fighting for the resources, you know. We ended up splitting the earth into different fractions and we would stay separated, you know. We need to uh, have a uni unified force to guide us, all of us, you know. Absolutely. the race and money and you know, stuff like that. But we have to do the right things too, you know. We have to like focus on the family, for instance. You know, uh, keep things simple and natural the way they used to work before when I mean, it was really good. Yeah, when we had land to to, so, to, to worry about. Family had a whole yeah. big giant piece of land. Nobody yeah. was worried about yes. running off and getting married and buying their own house and trying to maintain it. You you go and get more education and more money and bring it back to the family land and keep on building it up. And that concept is yeah, definitely gone. There are simple things that we can focus on them and isolate them and try to put more attention towards them. Right. You know, the environment is obviously the most important thing. That's where we live. It's like that, yeah. It's, yeah, it's our home and, and yeah. it's and it's and it's gone and it's yeah, it's bad. We gotta get smarter and we are, you know, there's a lot of smart people nowadays. Yeah, that's true. I mean, as much as I was talking shit about the younger generation uh, and their mental health issues, I do also notice that there are some some yeah. shining stars amongst them. We have to count. <laughs> there are some but shining you know, stars for they sure. They are the ones okay. who got all the dirty work. They inherited it from us. Right. We have to look at ourselves on the, the ones who gave it to them. Right. And so we have to understand that they are the ones who are going to deal with it and we have to support them to uh, with all, anything that we could. You know, the older generation need to really pay better attention to the young generation, you know. 
right. to what they want, what their needs are, right. and we have to respect that. You know, usually the people who make the law, they are like in their 80s. Right. They're ready they're to outdated. go to the next they, world. Yeah, they, don't, yeah. they need to, uh, we need to have a shift of keeping those people too, because they know how the wheels work. But bringing in more young blood that cares for what's happening. Because I think every politician, before he becomes a real politician, he should be an environmentalist first. Huh. So that should be the criteria before you uh, even become a politician. Uh -huh. You have to graduate through an environmental project that you already have done. You know, something good for the planet, you have proven yourself, you know, and you can move on to politics. You could be trusted by people. Yeah. You know, and yeah. we need to shift, we need to judge our people by the project that they have done. And give them leadership according to that. Right. And definitely, uh, we need to do simple things that can help us without hurting our bad ways. For instance, fishing. You know, if you, people who catch fish with hand lines, which is not a big net that catches half of the ocean, right? Uh, they could use a simple practice to uh, enlarge the number of fish in the ocean or keep the fish by looking at every fish that they catch. If it's a male, keep it. If it's a female, throw it back. Start with that. You know? That simple thing like that could increase Good the Lord, number man. Of fish. As much as I'd like to try to consider myself to be an environmentalist, I've never even thought of that. Simple things like that. And also create fish reserves that don't have to be large. You know, they could be just a mile by a mile, you know, but just keep those places clean. Sacred. Sacred. Leave it leave it alone. At, and, also, the, and know, the community agrees. They could be rotated, you know. Yeah, yeah. The Hawaiians would stick a, a stick in the sand and say, okay, this year we can only fish on the right side of the stick. You know, and then next year we can only fish on the left side of the stick. Simple stuff like this. We should learn from the Hawaiians, you know, about nature. We should adapt the ways that they have learned and practiced, you know. They knew a lot about nature, you know, and they kept it going. You know, they had a million and a half people here that they fed. Wow. Fish ponds, you know, in Molokai there is like over 60 fish ponds. Now we had a big one, you know. Uh, and they were natural, they had a way of like a gate that only small fish could come in and big fish cannot go out. And inside the fish pond, the shallow water, the water gets heated up quicker. The whole process is quicker, the fish were really quick. Inside the pond, you know, they would even have like a barracuda and a turtle inside the pond. The turtle would eat all the poisonous seaweed. Right. And the like barracuda its, it's would own ecosystem, yes, basically. The bar yeah, they, they understood about creating ecosystems. Yeah, yeah. And um, we can still do it today in a beautiful day, way, you know, and we could uh, uh, actually clean the ocean, you know, by uh, creating a pearl farm, for instance, in a place. The bivalves filter the ocean constantly. Okay. You know, they are the greatest ocean filters, you know, and you make money while you're cleaning the oceans. There are ways to do it, you know, we don't have to lose, you know, or sometimes invest. We just need to be wise and learn nature. And unified. Yeah. Right? Yeah, unified. We, we, we have to be Exchange unified. energy, work together. And also, I believe, like, if you grow up in one country, when you are a young man and you can leave your family, go to another, go to another country and live there with the family for a while. You know, help them learn the language. That used to be done, right? Realize how didn't, we are all didn't that used to one be done? family. They call it foreign exchange. Uh, yeah, kind they, of, it's still being done. Right. You know, but uh, it's a good idea to uh, you know go live in India for a while, you know, or Africa, you know. And just by being there, you'll be doing good stuff. Mm -hmm. who are living there and bringing their smarts of the land to your country. <laughs> you know, because everywhere people learn, we have separated different races and different nations to learn things on our own. But now we're coming back together and sharing the knowledge. You know, it's a beautiful thing.
Yeah, cross. You got to cross pollinate for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> A lot of the things that you just said um, are basically, you know, I mean, obviously the fact that we're both artists probably is probably the reason why we have a similar idea of what you know what of what the problems and solutions are um, I, I noticed that I enjoy the conversations that I have with creative people and then when um, when I try to have a conversation with like somebody who's just on the hamster wheel just going to work every day and working for somebody else oh, dude I lose my shit I'm like I'm like you have no actual original ideas thoughts or anything to we offer should, you're just regurgitating what you which you're should, learning. We should not judge all these people. We're I doing know. all the work for you're us. Right. You're right. I, we shouldn't you judge know, them, but uh, I cannot have uh, a conversation, uh, uh, an enjoyable uh, conversation uh, with them, is what I'm admitting to you. I understand that. <clears throat> um, it's not easy to be in a crowd of people and not to be part of the crowd. No. Right. There's a lot of pressure. Right. So Not reasons, easy. I still don't have a telephone. I still don't even know how to use it. And uh, wow, you know, I've gone to other countries without it and managed to come back to make it back. And uh, I'm not saying that it's good or bad, but it's a different world nowadays. You know, I'm still trying to experience the old school ways in this new world. You know. Right, which is probably and, uh, which is probably judging, smart. Without judging, you know, because the telephone is a good thing as well. Yeah, good I was bed, I was know. getting ready to start judging you as soon as you told me that. I was I was, but then I had to stop myself and be like, okay, uh, yeah, it, it, this is his choice. It brings, it brings our world together at the same time, you know? <laughs> and uh, it's like this in everything, you know. It's a, the law of duality on this planet is like in everything from the molecular as above, level. so below. As well, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, you know, all the worlds are, you know, they're running on love, mother, father, kids, you know, continuing learning, graduating, growing on the evolutionary scale, you know. Um, the biggest problem, I think, right now is how many people we have on the planet. Too many? Uh, that's not for us to judge, okay, because we are not God, you know. I think it's a learning process for all of us, and that's the greatest environmentalist thing, is how we get closer to each other and sharing the environment and the resources, and it's getting less and less, and how we're going to do with it, you know? Are we going to be able to maintain nature alongside with us? Have nature living next to us, you know, open corridors for nature, to be able to move freely among us and around us and uh, us, you know, uh, getting to a level where we are not poaching animals and, you know, helping people who need the meat uh, in ways that they could feed themselves without poaching, you know, it's like all through sharing. And so don't look at the poacher like he's greedy or this. That person is trying to feed his baby. True. You know, that thing always exists, you know, there is two sides to everything. You know? oh, yeah. And so we need to judge less, but we need to understand more and help more, you know, if we do, and help in the right areas. Of course, help ourselves first so we can survive and operate and do good and feel good amongst us. And then, you know, share the, share whatever we can share you know, don't go crazy with sharing, but share. Absolutely. You know, and uh, share as much as you want at the moment, you know. But do, either with your energy and your love, whatever you can give, it doesn't have to be money. Right. You know, and uh, it's coming, you know. It's like Cuba went through the oil crisis in 1982, where they were shut off. Their uh, energy, and they had to find new resources. And of course, they were not alone. People from around the world they were helping with knowledge, teaching them how to garden. Pretty soon, Havana was growing its own food. 80% of all the food in Havana came from the rooftops. You know, they were they learned agriculture. They cleaned the city, opened all the raw fields resorted into organic agriculture 
because they couldn't afford fertilizer or the sprays. <laughs> Thanks goodness. That's why all the coral reefs around Cuba are alive. No Roundup. No Roundup. <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's that's how I'll, you know if we resort to uh, using chemicals, for instance, that's a very important thing in our planet. <clears throat> You know, that's a quick way that is actually leading us to nowhere. Yeah, we're killing it's ourselves. We're killing ourselves, and starting with the microorganisms yeah. and working its way back to, back to our system. We are so to our, related, our you know, we go back and forth with our planets. You know, that's home, you know, it's like... You know, we piss in our own home, we shit in our own home, but we flush it to the ocean. Flush it to somebody else to deal with. Yeah. Um, we're learning. You know, we're learning. In the, you know, it's, a lear it's a learning curve. It's going to take a long time to learn. But, you know, the good thing is, like, all the pollution, the plastics that are in the oceans right now, that could be viewed as our new source of energy into the future. You know, um, with creativity, you can create many products from the roads mm -hmm. to homes to anything you can think of with so that material by recycling it and cleaning the ocean. You know, that's a huge part now. We need to all get to work on that level, you know, and that's where the younger people really will have to kick in, you know, um, and get paid very well for their jobs, you know, environmental jobs in the those jobs should be really cherished and be valuable for the young people and really make it so they are happy doing them, you know, and be able to run their own families doing those jobs. And it gotcha. makes complete sense, you know. Gotcha. And so there's a lot of new jobs opening for people, you know, that has to do with restoration of the environment and, and creating food. The Dutch are unbelievable for growing in greenhouses. You know, a small village in Holland can fit a huge part in Europe. It's possible to do it. And also, the greenhouses reflect the, the sun rays back to the atmosphere. They're actually cooling the planet. Uh -huh. So, um, and they use uh, LED lights, growing tomatoes. They produce like 350 low pounds out of Low one voltage, but, but, but high wattage at the same time, basically. Yeah, they have an amazing already knowledge and the productivity coming out of those areas and they're still learning more you know so so let me ask you something about your artwork yeah. um is the, how do you sell your artwork like uh is it just in galleries or person to person or do you have any kind of like is there a way on on the internet or online where people can view your art and order it or anything yeah, like yeah. that uh, it's called avicuriati.com and i'm on instagram and facebook and my wife and my daughter and my son they do all of that okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write down your website your instagram your facebook and when i edit this video right at this section and then at the beginning and yeah at the beginning and at this section which is the end i'll i'll have all of that scroll scroll through yeah so that because this is going to go on youtube i have your permission sure okay absolutely i hope that we had a good conversation i'm i'm already i got chicken skin already that's you know so i mean i just feel like these kind, kind of conversations the, the world can benefit from hearing you know, because they're so busy, like, you know, that they don't really have the time. We choose to make this time for ourselves, yes. and I'd like to maybe try to share that with the yes, world so that yes. they can see the importance and they of work it. so hard for us. Absolutely. And if we can share any goodness with them, it's a wonderful thing, you know, because it's like we do our art for everybody to be happy, you know, and people have the appreciation at least to enjoy the art, you know. And right. Goodness comes out of it. Absolutely. Well, one last time. Say your name for the camera. Avi Kiriati. Sorry. In Maui. Yeah, I'm Juan yeah, Lennon. And we out here in Maui just chilling, having a creative conversation about the solutions and not the problem. Love y'all. Blessings to you. And I'm out. Aloha.